Hey everybody, this is Ori from OneScales. In today's topic, I'm gonna cover how to set up an email and a domain for your Google workspace and show you how to do it with emphasis on the DNS record. So most of what we're gonna do is set it up and make sure that you set up the correct DNS records and make sure you have everything. As of 2024, there's actually multiple steps you have to do uh, in comparison to before 2024, most people would just set up M MX records, which is basically define the email servers and that's it and set up and uh, good, be good to go. So uh, one thing uh, before we actually start, I wanna mention, so what is Google Workspace? Google Workspace is basically a paid service by Google, which lets you for your business, for your own domain, for example, onescales.com or the example we're gonna use heartcarving.com, which is a test domain we have, uh, to actually have your own uh, workspace, right? So your emails use uh, a business version of Gmail, you have Google Drive, you have all these kind of permissions, all these kind of security, all these kind of things you can do. It's a paid service and it's per user, per email address, per user. You're actually going to pay per month for it and you can check there's different rates and stuff like that. But the focus of today is how to set it up with emphasis on DNS records, in particular, MX records, TXT records, and in, in particular, in the TXT records, we have DMARC, we have SPF records, we have DKIM records, DKIM records. Okay, so let's jump into it very simply. So we have a test domain uh, right here. And as always, if you have any questions on any of these steps, just let us know, ask particular questions. So what we're going to do is we're going to, first of all, uh, we set up an account already. If you haven't just registered, go to admin.google.com, register, etc. Uh, what we're going to do is because we already have domains here, I'm going to create a new one to show you everything from scratch. So I'm going to click on account and I'm going to click on a manage domains right here and I'm going to set up a new domain. I'm going to click on new domain here and I'm going to type in my name heartcarving.com and this is just my new domain. Okay. Very simple. So uh, because I have multiple domains, it'll actually be a secondary domain. We have our primary domain, which is one scales, what we do content from. Okay. So very simply put. Okay. So, um, now we're clicking on add domain. Now we have to start verification. We need to be owning the domain name, right? So we need to do that. So you have two options. You need to verify and go to your DNS records and do things. Number one is it's going to recognize where you bought your domain name. For example, we bought ours with Cloudflare, but you might have GoDaddy or Namecheap or whatever. There's so many uh, domain registrations. So you can either sign in to verify or you can do it manually. Typically, I, I like to not give uh, authority to other systems. I like to do it manually, but you can do both. Uh, that's based on your own requirements. So I'm going to click on switch verification and I'm going to click on create a TXT record. I'm going to click on this. You can do actually any of these. The automatic is signing in TXT or C name works. I'm going to click on next right here. And at the same time, I'm going to my DNS records where I actually set up my domain name and I can specify all the records, all the, the where things belong to. Okay. So I'm going to go right here and I'm going to go and it's going to actually tell me what to do. So I'm going to create a TXT record with the at sign. And then this is the actual uh, text value. So go here. I'm going to go here, create a TXT record. And, and the value I'm just gonna paste from what it is. So I'm gonna click on save. Sometimes it takes a few seconds or a few minutes or even a few hours to verify these things. Usually it's within a few seconds. So once you click on save, usually you can wait a minute or so and it should be fine. If not, you just gotta check back, okay? So what I'm gonna do right here, I'm gonna click on protect domain. So let's click on protect right here. And it's actually gonna verify that I own the domain because if I own the domain, I can actually make changes to the DNS record, which is what I did right now. Okay, great. So now it's a, it's going right here and it says, okay, we're going to check. You can close this page and return later. No problem. Usually it verifies very, very quickly. I've done it many, many times and it should be okay. So heart carving right here. And you notice here, it's actually called verified. So now what we need to do is activate Gmail. So we finished the first step, which is set up the domain and verify that we own the domain. We told Google Here's the record that you asked me to put. I've proven that I have access to this domain. I actually own this domain and I've proven it, proven it to you, okay? So now we're gonna click on activate Gmail. We need to set up the MX records, which are basically the, uh, telling anytime someone wants to send an email from that domain, and for example, ori at heartcarving.com, info at heartcarving.com, bob at heartcarving, it'll actually use a specific mail uh, servers, right? So it'll use Gmail in this case to 
uh, send, send and receive emails on behalf. So I clicked on uh, next and again, you can sign in automatically. It'll automatically do for you. Or I like to actually do everything manually. Click on manual. Both should be okay. The automatic is slightly easier and quicker, but I like to do it myself. Okay, so now it's actually going to give me all these records, and you can just obviously read the instructions, but it's going to give you all of these. So I'm going to actually copy all of these. So I'm going to copy this, make sure you have the correct priority, the host, and the value itself. Okay, so I'm going to go here to MX Records. Okay, and the priority is number one. So let's just make sure I copy that correct. Okay, next one. So now I'm going to have priority fi uh, five. Was that correct? Yeah, five. So MX, and what you're doing, you're basically specifying multiple servers that if there's an issue with one of them, it'll go to the other ones. That's that's the point of what it, this is, okay? Next one, and I'm gonna copy the next one. You can skip this if it's, this is just gonna take a few seconds. Here's another five priority, MX, five, and two more, and we should be finished. And this is 10. And the last one is also a 10. Okay, great. So now if we finish and we set that up correctly, now we can go ahead and we can actually verify it. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to click on activate Gmail. Okay, great. So now it's going to verify. Sometimes this actually takes slightly longer to do, but again, within a few minutes, most of the time you should be okay. And you can also check back and, and do that. So now we actually set up the second thing. So we set up, we verify the domain. We set up the domain verify. That's number one. Number two, we set up the mail servers, the mail servers. You see it's Gmail activated. We're good. Okay. So the next thing we want to do is actually add some users, right? So we actually have mail servers, but we don't have any emails. So a user is basically a person that has access to a specific email. So I'm going to click here on add users and I'm going to go here and I'm going to create a new user. So let's just call it Bob Smith. I just make up one. And if you have multiple, multiple domains, you select your domain, Bob at heart carving. I can click on add uh, new, new user. Okay. So now we actually create the user. This user will have access based on this email. Obviously I'm going to delete this before I publish the, the email, but don't share passwords with anybody. That's an obvious thing. Of course. Okay. I'm going to go here and just keep this so I can copy paste later. Okay. So now, now if you actually go to gmail.com, you log in to your Google account, you will actually be able to log in. So let's try that right now. Gmail.com. And we're gonna go as Bob at heartcarving.com. And we're gonna put in the password. Okay, and the first time you agree to the terms and then you create your own password. Okay, so let's actually just make up something. Da, 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 da. Okay, try to have a password. Obviously don't share it. I'm obviously gonna delete this. Okay, and I'm gonna actually create just so I can copy paste later because this is the video. So now I'm in Google Workspace, which is Gmail. Now I can actually send and receive my emails. So don't forget to put your signature. Don't forget to customize. And most importantly, don't forget for every user, make sure you go to the actual account, manage your account, put two-factor authentication, make sure you have a separate password, make password secure, 2FA, have a SMS message, have an authentication app, uh, digital key, whatever it is, make sure a pass key, all that kind of stuff. Those are topics for other videos, which we've actually covered some of them. Okay. So now I can send and receive. I'm good, but there's actually a few more steps. If you've created email addresses and uh, Google workspace accounts before 2024, most of you just, that's it. You didn't do anything else, but actually because of Google and Yahoo, uh, and actually better security, you actually need to do a few more things for your DNS. In particular, you need to set uh, TXT records, SPF, DMARC, and DKIM. So what, what else do we need to do? So the next thing we need to do right here is go all the way here. I'm gonna use the search box. You can actually find it right here, but I'm actually going to encrypt, make sure my emails are authenticated for better in, uh, security of your emails. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna go here to my uh, domain. If you only have one, it'll just show one. And I'm going to click on generate new record. It's actually going to make sure that when emails are sent, they're actually encrypted correctly and they're verified and they're more secure sending. Okay. I'm going to click on generate new record. Just use everything in the defaults. Don't change anything. Okay. 
right here. Good. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a new record. It's a TXT record right here. And I'm going to go right here, TXT record, okay? And I'm going to go to the name and I'm going to copy the entire value right here. And I'm going to do this in the content and we should be good. Okay, let's see that. Okay, here, okay, so I verified, perfect. Okay, so that's uh, one thing and we're gonna verify everything. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna click here on start authentication and just let it run. Actually, sometimes it takes a while. It should stay like this. You should have the stop here because you're not gonna actually stop it, but you just know that it started and you should be good. So now the next thing I wanna do is actually, I want to do Gmail, or sorry, Google, workspace, Google workspace, SPF record. Okay. So now you're going to have to create another one, which is another X, another TXT record right here, create, and I'm going to go to the documentation. I'm just going to put it right here. So what you're going to do is you're going to create another TXT record with the at sign and go here, TXT record at sign and here. And this is basically saying that they this is allowing Google server, google.com servers to actually send email on your behalf. If you have multiple systems, for example, you have Google Gmail servers for your emails, but you're also your website uses MailChimp or Klaviyo or Zoho or any other system if you want to allow, you would actually for every system that sends emails on your behalf, which means that system can send on behalf for example of ori at heartcarving.com. You're going to add in the same row and include the domain and that space include another one and include. So if you have multiple, you'll have, you'll only be able to have one TXT record for this and you'll have to have multiple include, include, includes. I'm going to click on save. That should be good. So I finished that. And so we did uh, two TXT records, one for uh, encryption, one for verifying which servers can send on our behalf. We set up the mail servers. We verified our domain. Now we're going to actually have to set up one more thing, which is DMARC records. So in 2024, the, uh, the major uh, providers, Google, uh, Google, which is Gmail and Yahoo, they actually wanted to enhance security. They wanted to reduce spam uh, and uh, um, hacks and things like that. So they actually required additional thing, additional information for you to monitor your emails and make sure that if emails don't, if, if some server, a malicious one or a spammy one is trying to send on your behalf, but they don't have these two TXT records, you can tell the systems, uh, Gmail and Yahoo and all those providers, you can tell them what to do if someone is actually pretending to be you, but they don't have the correct records and they're actually not verified from your specific domain. It's, if it's not in this DNS records, which is the topic of this video, then you should spam, either de don't deliver it, delete the email or do nothing, report only, or um, just uh, uh, put it in the spam folder. Now we've made videos, I'm gonna link the DMARC videos we've made it already, so I'm gonna touch on it just very little, but I'm gonna reference that because we have two really good videos about that talking about DMARC and you have to do it. So how do we do DMARC? There's gonna be one more thing we need to do. Um, so you can create your own or you can copy paste and I'm gonna put in our, a link to our article, but what I like to do is I like to use a um, tool called Easy DMARC. Uh, we also, in our video, we recommend to you to try the free free uh, trial because they have uh, a better reporting for it, but that's up to you. You don't need to use it, obviously. What I do do is I can use their um, their tool to actually create one uh, for ourselves for DMARC, okay? So let's click on DMARC record generator, and I'm going to do hard carving, and I'm actually going to uh, specify. So if someone is trying to spam and they're tr pretending to send email on your behalf, what do you want to do? What do you want the mail servers, for example, Gmail to do if someone's trying to send on your behalf an email to a Gmail user or at Yahoo user? Do you want to just reject it? Don't deliver, tell them don't deliver it to quarantine, which basically means put it in the spam folder or do nothing. In the beginning, you should do non-monitoring. And after a while, after a few months, if you feel comfortable and you know everything is good, then you can actually reject it. But again, check out the video. There's a lot of detail to that stuff, okay? Um, and then, so for example, if there's actually an issue, someone's trying to send on your behalf, where do we report to? Uh, which email to report to? Okay. So what I'm going to do right here, I'm going to say, for example, Ori at, um, sorry, Bob at a heart carving. Now this should be a specific email, uh, 
that sends reports to your IT team or something like that. And if you have your own uh, EasyDMark or any other platform, you can use the other ones, uh, you'll actually set up another email just for that, okay? So I'm gonna go right here, I'm gonna click on Generate, and now what I'm gonna get uh, doing is I'm gonna actually have another DNS record, which is a TXT record, which says, this is my DMARC record. If uh, someone is pretending to be me, don't do it. Don't just still deliver it. And then I want you to report it to bar, uh, bob at heartcarving.com. So I'm going to go right here and I'm going to set up the last one. Right here, TXT record. This is the name. Some domains, by the way, uh, you might, some domain registers, you might have to copy the whole thing. But for Cloudflare and a lot of others, you just need to copy this. Okay. And the last one is the value, put it here and good to go. Okay, so now actually we've set up everything. This is basically finished for this video, right? So we finished, we set up everything. Now we can send and receive on behalf of the new domain, the email we set up, we can set up, you know, obviously set up more emails, things like that. We basically finished, so we're good to go. If you want, you can actually use a tool like EasyDMark to actually uh, validate. Let's go right here. And let's check one more so we can do domain scanner right here and heartcarving.com and click on scan. And actually this scan is to help you check that you've actually set up Gmail correctly. It'll help check if everything is good. You have your DMARC record, your SPF record, your DKIM record. BIMI is not relevant because that's relevant to other businesses. It's not for uh, email security and setup. It's actually for logo and brand recognition, completely different. So you can discard this. Uh, that's it. So everything looks okay for me. I think I set it up. And we're good to go. That's it. This is the end of the video. Uh, most importantly, I want to make sure that you understand what to do. One Skills is here to help you. This is why we make tutorials, articles, how to debug, we answer your questions, social media, et cetera, et cetera. As always, if you have a question, I went too fast. It's too technical for you. You're not sure what to do. You have a specific use case. Uh, that is very different. Maybe you have multiple subdomains, multiple emails. You, you don't use uh, Gmail, you use Gmail and something else. You have multiple TXT records. You have errors. You're not sure what to do. Ask us. We're here to help you guys. The community is here to answer. We're here to help answer. We're going to do our best to help you as best as possible. We're going to make more videos, more details. We're here. Uh, that's it. So uh, last thing, <coughs> excuse me. If this video helped you in any way, if you have any questions, let us know. But if it helped you in any way, just say hi. Tell, tell us it helped, it didn't help, this part helped, I want to go in more detail on that one. And if you did, I really appreciate if it did help you in any way. Please uh, like, please subscribe, please join our newsletter, please share with a friend, a colleague, uh, your parents, uh, whoever it is. We want to grow this. We want to reach more people. We think we have good content. I really hope you enjoy this content. And that's it. Hope you enjoyed everything. And we'll link everything in the YouTube uh, comments on our website, in our article, on social media, LinkedIn, Twitter, etc., etc. Much, much appreciated, guys. Thank you for listening uh, and talk to you soon. Thanks.